Final regular season home game today for the Cougars. It's a win and you're in scenario as USF tries to qualify for next week's NAIA playoffs. Hi everybody, welcome in to Bishop John M. Darcy Stadium along with Art Mandelbaum and the Judge Phil Hauk. I'm Joe Parson. So many questions to be answered today and over the next 36 hours. Will St. Francis qualify for the playoffs? Will they have a home playoff berth? If on the road, where and against whom? One question will be answered here today. If USF gets by a 1-9 Central State University team, Cougars would be in. Third down and six. Bozier out of the pistol. Steps up, wants to throw to the right. He's got a catch here and a nice move back to the right. Inside the 20-yard line, and he lost the football. It goes out of bounds. St. Francis will have possession. And Wyatt Tungle ready to snap the ball. Goal line offenses in. A little motion right to left. They'll hand the ball in the sweep. Coming up, here's Austin Coleman. Needs a block. Got one at the 10. And angles out of bounds near side somewhere around the 7 yard line. Austin so Austin Coleman, and that is just his sixth rushing uh, attempt of the season. To 27 yards out. Here's the hold. The kick is long enough and on the way, and it is good. Call it a 27-yard field goal by Hemel Eber, and that is his fifth field goal of the year in seven attempts. 3-0 USF, and we'll be back. This is Cougar Football on Redeemer Radio, Catholic Radio, AM 1450. Francis on the M.O. Eber field goal leads at 3-0. Here's a stretch run to the left side and going nowhere, and there was Big Matt Smith. They didn't get a glove on him, and he came through. He had five tackles last week, and he made the ball carrier pay with a loss of two. What kind of intimidation that lasted. He left the ball game, but I think that's just Coach's decision. And now they try to screen the ball, but that was telegraphed, and the Cougars knocked that one down. They also, that is that Anthony Moore? Or no, it's Cowball. Brody Cowball lost the helmet. Too wide to the right as well. And Jeffrey Brooks out of the gun. Wants to hand it off to Ralph Clements. Works back to left side, and he's got another first down. USF, a lot of running room in the middle for the uh, Marauder, and he's all the way into Cougar territory to the 46. And uh, Clements is the uh, deep back, will hand the ball to him, off tackle run to the right side, and uh, that time strung out very well by USF. Gain is only inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. It'll be a pickup of about two, maybe three. St. Francis this year, you don't know what you're gonna get. Clements buried right at the 15, a loss, and uh, that was grab and stop that uh, came in there, and he had some help. Matt Smith there as well. That time the front four got the job done. Right to left angle. And a kick is blocked oh, partially at the line of scrimmage. It will uh, be picked up into the, and run out of the end zone by Anthony Moore. And it's then gonna be a tackled. That's a touchback. Wow, that at least he covered up on the ball. It's 40 yards, a kick on three punts. Inside the five at the three, got it away, short wobbly kick. This one will hit and takes a CSU bounce way oh upfield inside the 35 to the 32 yard line. And that is where the Marauders will have a marvelous opportunity. First and 10, trailing at three nothing. Third down and let's still call it nine. Two protectors in as Brooks drops the throw. Steps up, he'll run, running room again. 30-25 slides down for a first down at the USF 22. And there's a penalty flag. Well, the umpire's going to call a penalty because Brooks slid feet first and uh, I don't remember. quarterback. And under center, looks deep handoff. And a run to the left side, nice move, a cut to the 10, to the 5, and wow. it will be a touchdown as second effort, just running over people, Alfredo Musa, they list him at 180, and a junior will take it in for a touchdown at the 13-31 mark, and CSU leads. He's got a long this year, Art, of 98 yards, three touchdowns on kickoff returns this year. Oh, we need something here, Joe. That drive from Central State was a four-play, 32-yard drive. It took a minute and 14 seconds. And they have eight first downs. We only have three. We got to get in the football game here. Here comes the kick high end over end down the middle. Coleman looking up in the sun. Gathers it in at the seven. Works left side across a 15, 20, 20. Gets steady outside. 30, 35, 40. One man to beat. Splits defenders. Still his third inside the 30. 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. Austin Coleman for the second game in a row. Will be good for some 93 yards. Maybe 97. I think he got it at the three, Joe. He yeah, had seven yards. <laughs> and wow, what a player. You know what? That's unbelievable. We, we've never seen anything like that kind of special teams dominance 
by a single player at this level. That was unbelievable. The only thing that occurs to me is Corey Jackway back in the day. He had some moments like that, but this, this kid is something else. Game in, game out. And uh, now CSU has learned they will kick away from Austin Coleman. Out of the gun once again, Wilson drops to throw, steps up, wants to run, cuts to his right, finds nothing, dropped for a loss back at midfield. And a little difference in the running between Jeffrey Brooks, the initial quarterback, and now Michael Wilson. Right now, though, Cougars trying to take care of their own business just to be eligible. Motion left to right. Here's a run up the middle, and there's some running room. Kobe Fly gets away from one, cuts to his left, and gets it out across the 30-yard line to the 31. He's got a first down. Second down and six, let's call it. Blitz being shown defensive right side by CSU. Zone blitz, actually. And here's the pitch to the right. They're run away from the blitz, and Wolf looking for some running room. Cuts to the 40, and then chops. And he's in motion. Pitches the ball to him to the right side. Wolf cuts back. Tripped up with a long five. Straight ahead carry. And there's some running room for Wolf, and he attacked the move, leading it by four. Deep handoff. Wolf follows the block of Kronk and hit hard, though, once again. A short drop. Now the draw to Wolf. Wolf maneuvering for 45. Gets by one. Cuts to the 40. And wrapped up. And they were three of ten only, but the pitch comes right side to Wolf. Wolf has got a chance to score on the right sidelines. They'll pump him out of bounds inside the 10. It'll be first and goal coming up. Frank Wolf that close from uh, taking it to the house. Ray Thurton and uh, Aaron Knight are the wideouts respectively. Spread offense once again. Kobe Fry up on the wing in motion. Right to left behind the line of scrimmage. Bozier to throw. Looks right side. Throws the ball. And Knight took it away from a defender. Took it away from oh, Lewis. Lewis. It'll be a six-yard touchdown catch. Aaron Knight with great hands and a 16-6 Cougar lead at the 601 mark. Now with a little post pattern. He took three steps straight forward and then a hard cut with the right step planted. He, he uh, hit to the middle of the the end zone and the ball was well thrown. Willis was there to defend, report. but uh, it was well thrown and a good catch. To wide either side of the field. And Bozier checking as play clock is down to four, down to three. Now the snap and Bozier looking to throw and that one sails, but a nice catch. Big hit delivered, but the holding on at the 40-yard line was Bryce Thorpe. Second down in 10 and a minute, 48 remains. Cougars lead at 17-6. Motion fry right to left. As Bozier drops, the rush is coming, screens the ball, Wolf cuts at the 40, 35, back middle of the field, 30, and then gets it down to the 26-yard line. So Frank Wolf, and they'll move the chains for a Cougar a first down. That'll stop the clock with a minute 40 remaining. Second down and 15. Glock did not move, still shows a minute 35. And motion again to the near side by Kobe Fry. Bozier wants to throw. Looking, looking, dancing. Throws over the middle. Coleman's got it inside the 15 down to the 10 yard line. Delivered, laid it nice in there nicely. Justin Bozier as Huston Coleman saying, yes, that was a good play. That was a good throw. 26 yard pass play, Joe. You called it before. You said maybe we'll go to Coleman. 26 yard pass play down to the five. Our 10th first down of the half. As we're down to minute 13. Goal line offense comes in, Bozier under center, taking the snap, waiting, and looks, uh, hands it up the middle. And there's a run down close to the goal line. Did they get in? Touchdown. Fry. Kobe Fry, the ball. Kobe Fry, Fry for the touchdown. rushing touchdown at the 103 mark. So tack on. Remember, the Cougars trailed 6-3. Now they're up at 23-6. Joe, it's nice to see Kobe Fry, the senior, get a chance to run the football so many times today. Carries it for five yards and a score, and the Cougars have that 23-6 lead. They lost their first game by shutout last week, and here's Jeffrey Brooks, swings it right side, and that's Khalid Ali eaten up as that was Juarez all over him for a loss. Well, they're going to stop the ball for 40. It's only a yard loss, but that looked worse than it was. Wow. And a little motion now is, uh, I think that's Michael Wilson. They want to reposition way from the left side to the right side. Play clock is down to 14. Brooks steps up in the pocket, throws right side, and that one is picked off. And here's a run left sideline, and that's Vandenbosch, I believe, inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Yep, it was Vandenbosch. Maybe a pass to a pick six opportunity for Derek Vandenbosch. That is going to be his first interception of the season. And the first turnover of the game just during one of the, uh, I don't know if that was during one of the breaks or we were on air. I said something about neither team has uh, coughed up the ball, but that's the first turnover. And we have the ball for 20, Joe. One of the seniors here being honored on senior day. Long count from the line of scrimmage now. And 
and play action fake. Here's a screen coming left. Fries to the 10. To the, to the 10 now. And cuts back middle of the field. Got to the 5. Caught that ball actually at the 15. But uh, it'll be first and goal. The clock stops with 7.2 seconds remaining. Matthewson is the uh, the running back back there. Lined up behind Justin Bozier. And here is Bozier. Wanting's got to throw quickly and throws a knight. Laying out. Did he get a foot? Oh, 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 no chance of being completed. It was to the outside. Bozier delivered it where Knight was going to be the only guy with a chance. But Curdy get a foot in bounds and still lay out and catch the football he did. Joe, that was an unbelievable catch. I mean, that was a back shoulder thrown ball that was low and far away, and Knight just ran and turned the corner and got to the little the, uh, the pylon, and he dove and kept his feet on the ground. That was unbelievable. Second down and 10. Bozier in the first half, 7 of 15, 92 yards, two touchdowns. And play action fake, screens the ball, throws and he's got Jeremy Mays all alone inside the 40. Does he have a nip? Don't race him inside the 10, he does not. But he's got it first and goal at around the seven yard line. Nobody was within 20 yards of Jeremy Mays. Well, that was an unbelievable scheme, Joe. We obviously saw something there, sending Mays out. Uh, from his tight end position to a, an out pattern, and there was some uh, cross up there. Uh, one back look, Motion Wolf takes the pitch right side, cuts to the five, and he'll just dive into the end zone from two yards out. Five yard touchdown run, Wolf. And the Cougars on their opening series, the points on the board, they extend their lead at the 15.05 mark out to 37 6. Well, that was efficient. And it was led by that 50-yard pass play from Mays from Bozer. And I'm wondering whether Mays has caught his breath yet. Because that's a long way for the big guy to run. Atwood, the running back, lined up behind. Play action fake. Hunsucker wants to screen. He's got a catch. And a run after the catch. The ball is free. And that is USF covers up at the 48-yard line of St. Francis. And Hunsinger with a uh, count from scrimmage. Now looks, he hands it off, and there is uh, Atwood spins. I thought he had the first down, and now he comes back near side and gets into CSU. He just never quit on the play. He had the first down, gave it up, pivoted, come back to his left side, and gets it to the SSU, CSU 46-yard line. First and ten, Cougars on the move now into Marauder territory. Motion right to left by Bustamani. They'll pitch the ball to him. He cuts to the 45 to the 40 and just nudges out of bounds. And he'll gain about six or seven yards. It's funny to see him run and try to outrun those speedy guys. Not going to happen. And here's a kind of a Matthewson uh, handoff. And uh, he, he gets up eight or nine yards. That was a little bit like... Hunsaker looking for a handoff to a guy that wasn't there. And yeah. waited and finally did get to Kyle Matthews in the ball. Coach Donnelly and I were talking about that. And uh, he's going to have his strength, I think, as an inside runner. Strong runner. And speaking of strong runs, how about this move? And Matthewson just taking would-be tacklers inside the 20, under the 16. I think he's starting to find that niche. Yeah, he's figuring it out. That's an eight-yard gain, so 15 yards in the last two rushes in the last two plays for Matthews. Well, he's kind of the project in the works. The heir apparent in the years ahead, but uh, he's got the ability to feel the pressure and get away from it. Now a throw completes. Bustamani wheels inside the five, and he's got a touchdown. So that'll be a 12-yard touchdown to Amanda Bustamani Hunsucker, his second touchdown pass of the season. Joe, so I almost had the sense that they were trying to get Bustamani something there. You know, they gave him the ball, he ran the ball once, they passed it to him as the third pass to him in that drive for the second completion with him. And it's almost like, okay, Coach D wanted to give uh, Bustamani a little opportunity here to get some uh, limelight on his senior. Brooks back in there out of the gun, hands the ball to uh, Clements. Terrell Clements trying to run. Could not get to the outside, running to his left. They're just trying to get the round pegs into the round holes. Here's Brooks, fires, and there's a caught catch at the 28-yard line. That was Khalid Ali. But where and against whom? Herring's coming out tomorrow afternoon around 2 o'clock. Here's a screen pass complete, but Hathaway just eats that up for very little gain. Trying to hit one of the running backs coming out of the backfield. Blake uh, checking Brandon Fields. So it'll be fourth down and still five, and they'll pick them all the way again. Now they reset, play clock's at five, still have time. High snap, and he one-hands the ball, drops it, and he'll be sacked back inside the 10 at the seven-yard line. Oh boy. 
And uh, Garrett Harvey at fullback. The pitch comes to Harvey, trying to pull his way to the five, looks for the pilot. Cartwheels into the end zone, touchdown. Wow. That's making your presence known. Second and nine, it'll be a nine yard touchdown run by Garrett yeah, Harvey at the 13 19 mark. And touchdown. Harvey with his third rushing touchdown of the year. Harvey got hit at the ankles at about the two yard line and uh, was catapulted into the air and ended up flipping and ended up at the end zone. We're going up to play an NAIA school. It has not worked out to their, uh, as the that gun. Here's Gunn trying to find some running or breaks it outside, cuts in, and runs right into the arms of Jordan Page. And now the ball is stolen. And it'll be run back by Darius Wilson. And uh, Wilson's got a chance to score, and he will take it across the goal line. That's going to be about a 55-yard return. I don't know what happened with Rich Gunn. It looked like he was going down, and suddenly it was Darius Wilson with the football and a 55-yard fumble recovery touchdown for the uh, Marauders, and they're on the board for the second time today, still trailing at 52-12. to Dali wide to the right side. Here's Jeffrey Brooks. He scrambles to his right, throws the back, and, and he's got a catch for a two-point conversion. Coming up with that ball, I believe, was Fluker. David Fluker. He's done a good job coming in. Here's the punt coming up, and a high wobbly ball. And that one, Cuevas will field inside the 15. Stays on his feet at the 10. Dodges a tackle, but he's back inside the 10. And then the football fumble, but it's down on contact. No touchdown. It'll be CSU ball back at the two yard line. Was that Burge who came down or Matheson? Matheson, I think, Joe, came down and made that big hit. Uh, I mean, out of nowhere, he's like shot out of a cannon. CSU's still trying to get their uh, lineup. It's, uh, here's the snap to Brooks. Wants to throw to the end zone. He's got a man, and there's a catch for a touchdown. And drop, but did he have it all enough? He did. That Nimmons. catch by Nimmons. 52 to 20, he's got great field position at the 35 yard line. So David Yoder hands the ball off and that's Matthewson bowls his way inside the 30 down to the oh, 28 yard line. There. Georgetown, I don't think they're gonna make a play St. X or Marion's too. Here's Matthewson again, tripped up, but the dives the inside game. the 15 yard line down to about the 12. <laughs> but, but they do it because you're right on the geographical significance of trying to cut expenses. Here's Matthewson looking for a goal line, did he get in? And I think that was a choice. I think he had a chance to score. And they're going to run a play, and Matthewson does get into the end zone. So much for that. that and that's his first rushing touchdown of the year, Kyle Matthewson. So you, you can't blame anybody that we did that. They've scored two consecutive touchdowns. They haven't quit. And so we've got our younger guys in there who want a chance to do well. Wilson again out of the gun. Short drop. Time of the pocket. Now flush to his left. That's a little bit of a different move. Now throws and's got it. Oh, it is. Up and it is. Tracy Hathaway took it away. And that was the lead out. Lee Ball in and out of his hands. And Tracy Hathaway with a gift interception. Congratulations on another great victory. Uh, obviously, we're going to be looking forward to the playoffs now. I thought this was a game that was close after the first quarter. Kind of a team, though, your team that knows how to win football games and their team that's still trying to figure themselves out. Well, they're very talented, but they're young. You know, they haven't uh, been able to get things rolling like I know that they will. Uh, our kids play hard. We play well. Did some good things. Uh, for some big special teams play, I think, started things rolling. <clears throat> we were able to keep the ball in front for the most part. So uh, it, was, it was a good win for us. Mid-season, your team hit. Some two straight defeats. So the number one and the number two team in the country. Since that time, compare where you're at now with where you were then. Well, Phil, I'd like to think we're a heck of a lot better now. Uh, one, we're just starting to get healed up again. So when you get uh, good players well, well, then you know you're obviously going to perform better. I think we're starting to get some confidence right now, and I like our chances in postseason. Antoine Campbell coming back next week. Frank Wolf playing really, really well. Are you licking your chops over those two in the backfield at the same time? Well, Frank came down the floor this morning. Uh, Got to get him well, and we'd like to get Campbell back as well. Frank Wolf, senior running back out of Indiana. Frank, you came down with a little flu this morning, but uh, you still had some pretty good numbers today. Yeah, I've actually been feeling pretty bad since like Tuesday, but it just, it just keeps getting worse. But <clears throat> I knew it was senior day, and I knew that my team needed me just as bad as I needed them, so I. Took a, couple, took a couple meds and you know sucked it up and gave it my all. Well, you actually uh, fought through an injury at midseason, uh, came back at, really at a good time when uh, Antoine Campbell went down. 
And uh, you've had two outstanding games in a row. Talk about coming back from that injury. Uh, well, I just wanted to pick up where I left off. I felt like I left um, left the team, and I wanted to come back and pick up where we left off and make sure I was in the groove with them also. I didn't want to come in and mess up anything. But, I mean, oh, all in all, I think the injury really kind of helped me because I, I was able to get my rest in. I have fresh legs playing against a lot of defenses now. So we're just going to keep counting them and see, what, see where that takes us. Frank, reflect back a little bit uh, as this is senior day, and uh, you've been at St. Francis now for four years, and uh, you've seen a couple different teams, including one that didn't make the playoffs, and now you're a playoff team again. Where does this team rank? Uh, I think we're easily top three teams in the nation. I mean, the rankings, it doesn't really speak for us too much, but I think the way we're playing right now, we're, we can play against anyone and we can play with anyone that we line up against, and I think it's going to show in the playoffs. All right, well, congratulations on a great performance today. Over 100 yards again. And uh, you also caught a pass and had a touchdown. Sir, uh, it was pretty good. Thanks. All right, we'll see you later. And uh, we also got Derek Vandenbosch. Uh, Derek, that defense, you know, pitched a shutout, I think, in the third quarter as far as giving up no first downs. That's pretty good. Uh, you personally had an interception. You uh, you had a blocked kick and, uh, and a bunch of tackles. Talk about the defensive performance today by the Cougars. I thought we played good. I thought we've been playing good the past three games. We really uh, – stepped it up and been playing like we should have played all year. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy about it. Derek, as a senior on this team, you've seen different teams come and go. You've seen a team that didn't make it to the playoffs a couple of years ago. But uh, the Cougar tradition really makes a difference in a game like today. It seemed like we knew how to win a football game, even though we were down early in this football game. It really seemed like there was never any doubt. Yeah, uh, pretty much the whole game. I, I knew in my mind we were going to win it. and. Uh, I feel like everyone else had that same mentality that we were going to come out here and have a big win. Derek, after this defense had given up 40 points in three consecutive games back at midseason, did the defense kind of get together uh, maybe when the coaches weren't around and and uh, lay the law down a little bit? Well, I mean, we knew we, we shouldn't have been playing like that. We knew all year that we were a good defense and that we shouldn't be allowing uh, points like that. We made some adjustments, four down linemen, things like that, and I think uh, it worked in our favor. What's it like as a linebacker playing behind four down linemen as opposed to three down linemen? Because that really does seem to have made a big difference. Yeah, I mean, there's just more stopped up in there because the linemen can't get out and, uh, out to the linebackers, and, you know, they, they cause a big mess up there. So it just allows us to come in there and make the tackles. Right, well, Derek, congratulations on a great performance today, and good luck in the playoffs. We're all looking forward to that. Thanks for being on the show with us. Uh, guys, uh, a really nice uh, effort by the Cougars today. It started off kind of slow, but it just seemed like kind of like a freight train going downhill once the Cougar offense got started. And uh, a lot of people are happy, but a lot of players are not satisfied. They think this team can make a deep run into the playoffs. Back to you.